us a bit about the premise, what it's about. Um, it's about, it's actually based on a true story. Uh, this guy named uh, Spencer Banks, uh, went to school in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, grew up in a rough neighborhood. Uh, uh, he was also a very good boy. Had the opportunity to be able to go to a better school, a better neighborhood. Did that. Uh, still kind of had one foot in his neighborhood that he grew up in. And uh, still just trying to let that go uh, to see the bigger picture. And uh, he ends up going to a better school, excelling, and actually goes into the NFL. Okay. Um, and um, comes, uh, he needs a business owner around LA. He's a part owner of the parlor, uh, which is on the Melrose. And he has a new spot he just opened up <coughs> off of Slauson called Hilltop Cafe. So, uh, but the main focus is, is it is based on his life. So many stories you hear about young man who grew up in the neighborhood, get caught up in the game, life gets cut short, this guy, he beat the odds, he was able to go to college. Okay, sounds like a very important story to be told, right? Can you tell me more about your particular character? Uh, my name is Preach, uh, the character Preach. He, um, there's a connection that he has with uh, Sean, who was on the show who got killed. My character uh, is very different from his brother. We play A and you all together. But like so many uh, so many dudes, they get caught up in the game and make some wrong decisions. Uh, those decisions uh, uh, get the best of them. He goes to jail. But while he's in there, he definitely uses his time. He's a lot of people on that group of Um And uh, he just kind of educates himself. He gets out and uh, starts running with Tyrone. Who has uh, a couple of uh, stash spots in the world, so he yeah, calls me to kind of watch over the people. When Sean passed away, Sean had these little spots here. So he passed, he was next up to get those spots. So she was like, Oh, I can do it myself. And he was like, Nah, I don't trust you. So that's when I come in. But through it all, me and Coop built this bond. And she starts to let me know certain things. But I already kind of peeped it out early. But what I think put the nail in the coffin is that she tells me about Tyrone and how Tyrone got shot up here. And how, you know, Sean and, and uh, his brother and I were really good. So that's my character kind of takes the role of like the enforcer. He says, hey, okay, well, I'm going to take out this guy because he killed my friend and then everything will be over. So as the enforcer, I know, I don't want to uh, spoil anything here, no. but it sounds like your character had been shot. Yes, so he did so, get shot. And, but he's a resilient one. He yeah. survived. Yes. So tell us more about that. So, uh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, uh, my character gets shot. Um, and there's actually a storyline that is hopefully going to develop out of that. Because really, if it wasn't for Coop going to Tyrone, I probably would have taken Tyrone. Yeah. But she kind of ticked him okay. to what was going on. And, uh, and that's how I ended up being shot. But once again, thank God I, I survived. Absolutely, thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in season two, uh, we'll see how that story develops okay. and, and how my character develops as well. So, so it's the exciting. second season. It was formerly on CW Network and now Netflix or where can we watch? So CW, show? then it went to Netflix. Okay. And um, it just shows you how powerful Netflix is. Oh, absolutely. Once it was on Netflix, it was literally trending for three weeks straight at, at number one, number two, and number three. That's awesome. Well, it's the power of demand, right? So people can find what they want and watch it when they want to. Then they can watch literally the whole season. Yeah, that's great. So what happened is once uh, once Netflix once it went on to Netflix, literally it birthed a whole new audience. Yeah. And from that point on, social media. Everybody was like all American, all American, all American. Yeah. I'm going out to work out or I'm going out here and people yeah. are coming up to me like, yo, preach. Yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, oh I forgot it's on Netflix. Yeah. So with that being with, uh, with uh, popularity on Netflix, once again it birthed a whole new audience. Audience start getting on Facebook, Twitter, it's like yo, it's such a great show because all American really didn't get good ratings. Yeah. But once it got to Netflix, and the studio saw them. They're like, like popular vote now. Exactly. Right, 
That's so right. it's very popular with teens, um, young adults, older. Um, but really, the teens really love this show, and I kind of, I kind of put it next to what 90210, uh, okay. 90210. But this one, you're getting 90210, but you're also getting preach. So we've just learned of the importance of your role as preach in All American. Um, and so I'm curious about another important role that you've had in a, a, a monumental film that we are all very familiar with, Boys in the Hood. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about what that was like working under uh, John Singleton's direction? Yeah, um, I was 12, 13 years old. Um, the crazy thing, I started off as an extra. Okay. And, um, you know, I think it was maybe a week into shooting. Um, my mom was like, yo, it's, this guy is young. He's like, yo, he's like 26, 27 years old, yeah. straight out of college, SC. This is going to be huge. And I'm like, okay, you know, as a young kid, I'm just happy to be out of school yeah. on set. And um, lunchtime, uh, it's me, uh, Dez, plays, uh, not Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. Uh, we're all playing. Um, and John comes over. On football, and John's like, Hey man, where you from? Tell him, Man, I want to raise around here. He was like, Yeah, so what do you want to do? I was like, Yo, I'm gonna act. He was like, Oh, okay, all right. He was like, Well, after lunch, I'm gonna give you some lines in this scene. You good? And I was like, Yeah. So I go back to my mom, I'm like, Yo, I'm getting lines, it's upgrade <laughs> now, so now I'm able to get my sad card. And, uh, you know, from that point on, it was just amazing being on that set because. This is a young Angela Bassett, Morris yeah. Fishburne, Nia Long, Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr., Jr. Mm -hmm. um, Morris Chestnut, and Ice Cube. Yeah, you, you know, can't get just, much better. And being on that set, it was just amazing to be able to see these people work. Uh, but also, too, I always pride myself. I was actually there when Ice Cube recited How to Survive in South Central. Okay. It was lunchtime. He was like, John, I'm working on this song for the soundtrack. I want to spit it. So everybody's gathering around here. I'm this young kid. I'll squeeze my way in the middle, and I'm literally right by John Singleton. And Ice Cube was like, How to Survive a South Central? Oh, wow. Like, I was just amazed. Yeah. Because here it is you hear rappers on the radio, but that was my first time being in front of a rapper actually seeing him rap. Were you starstruck? How did it feel? Yeah, it was it was it was just like, yo, this is Ice Cube, yeah. NWA. But at this time he had broken away from NWA. So was it was this your amazing. first acting role or had you done anything prior? I did a couple of things prior. But this was like my actual first speaking role. Okay. Do you remember the line that you delivered? Can you give it to Oh yeah. Like yeah, it was like uh uh where they go I was like, yo man, they were uh, they going to jail and then it's like yo yo man what happened? That was that was it. That, I, mean, that started, I believe you. That's you know. that started it right there, and, <laughs> uh, and from that point on, it was just like me and John kept in contact. Um, he was always and still finishing school, go to school, finish school, and um, you know we kept in contact, big brother. And uh, from that point on, it was just like he did higher learning. Um, he invited me on the set of Higher Learning, uh, Poetic Justice. And I was like, yo, man, put me in, put me in. He was like, man, you need to finish school. Finish school. I was like, all right. Yeah, so uh, we've, um, we've recently lost John Singleton. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. So yeah. It's, um, was, how important was it for you to have that as a first learning opportunity or introduction, introduction into the acting world? Yeah, John saw something in me and gave me an opportunity, and I'm forever grateful. Um, and just being around John, uh, learning so much. Um, he, like I said, he definitely instilled learning going to school, learning as much as you can about the craft, and not just wanting to be in front of the camera, but also learning uh, what it takes to, to, to make a movie being behind the scenes. And uh, once I finished college, he gave me my first job as an assistant on Baby Boy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, those are amazing roles and probably hard ones to be, but in thinking about the best role you've been a part of, what's been your favorite opportunity thus far, or most memorable? Um, Probably Bones, okay. uh, the TV show, because I had to play this this kid from uh, Sierra Leone, and he was an amputee. Oh wow! Okay. So literally, in the show, my left arm is from the elbow okay. down is gone, okay. and okay. I had to have an accent. Yeah, lots of character development. A lot of character development, but it was also very emotional too, okay. because.
because I had to tell a story about how I became an amputee. Um, and if you know the history of Sierra Leone, there was a lot of, they, they, they recruited a lot of kid soldiers. Right. And it was either, you know, hey, the choice is in your hand, either you fight or you cut some uh, limb off or we kill your parents. So that character has so much depth and layers. It was, it was probably, I would say, to date. Have you only done dramatic roles thus far? Has there been anything any lighter or comedic roles? Oh yeah, what? I did. Um, I did a uh, Gronish. Okay. Uh, the spinoff of Blackish. Yeah. Um, and I played uh, the campus police officer. Oh nice. Okay. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but um, that was know. one of them. Um, I did a, a Nickelodeon show, uh, and uh, I've done a couple. What, my character on SWAT is kind of like. The Comic okay. of the show because it's very it's a very serious show, okay. but my uh, my character Little Red kind of brings the comedy aspect to the show. In thinking of a dream role opportunity that you would love to have in the future, what would that look like? It's mm, a good one. Uh, dream role would probably maybe a superhero role, okay. something like some yeah. Marvel. Ah, okay. Um, or I can definitely be a bad guy. Okay. <laughs> Which one comes more naturally for you? Oh man, that's a good one. I'm a really, I'm a really good guy. So okay, good I mean, guy, you've got to say that. The good, yeah. ah! <laughs> the good guy comes easy, but definitely would love to, to dig my teeth into uh, more of a bad guy. Okay. So I've got to ask you mm -hmm. about the passing of Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. What was that like, having been from the area? Did you were you there at the time? Do you can you tell us about yeah. like, what that felt like? Yeah, it was a, it was such a, it was a, a big loss to Los Angeles. Um, I actually uh, met and interviewed Nipsey Hussle before. Oh, he wow. was like super, super big, like at his grandmother's house. Um, so, you know, to see, you know, where he started from and where he, you know, where he had lied to, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. For him to be able to, you know, literally have businesses in the neighborhood. Like I said, I'm not I'm not too far. I'm literally like maybe five minutes down from Prince on Slauson. And he was definitely part of that community. Um, like I said, it was a big loss to Los Angeles, and uh, it's just sad. Yeah, it really is sad uh, that you know, his life is cut short uh, just due to some uh, jealousy. Yeah, but I will say this John Singleton put Crenshaw on the globe, and Nipsey was just an extension of what John put out in Poison. So hopefully there'll be more people following in that footprint that's been laid that yeah, foundation absolutely. to see what's absolutely. next, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I think the passing of Nip, there was such a bigger a bigger picture of just getting the LA gangs. I mean, we had gangs who were feuding for years come together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So through the tragedy, it was definitely somebody. Yeah, so you yeah. felt more that sense of community after? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Still holding on today, but like I said, it was such a big loss in the community um, because he was, he was well respected. You would definitely see him in the neighborhood. Like I saw him a couple of times, that was, you know. So you know, he was definitely what he talked about, not about the actual. Were you living uh, in that on the West Coast? Yeah, I was actually there. And the crazy thing is, I worked down the street from where Biggie was killed. Oh wow! At the, okay. the, I worked on Wilshire. Peterson, Peterson uh, Museum was literally right down the street, like not even a half a block. So I was working when, when Biggie got killed. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the loss of Pac is another sad one. Yeah, you it's know all, what I'm saying? I mean, Senseless violence. Yeah, not, not that you can compare any of these great yeah. losses to one another. But yeah, yeah, but they died too young. Yeah, absolutely. I will say that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, mm -hmm. in terms of like um, movies, we just want to know about your interest. Your, I know it's probably hard to narrow down, <laughs> but um, your top five favorite movies of all time. It could mm. be any category, any time period. What? Uh, Ocean's Eleven. Okay. All of them. Ocean's all of Eleven. Them. Okay, 12, we put 13. that as one. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Coming to America. Are uh, these in order? No. Okay. I'm right, just, right. I'm just blurting them out. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to think. Of course, Boys in the Hood. Gotta be. Um, baby boy. Cause I was in it. Um, and number five. That's a good one. 
Um, I would say, man, that is a really good I mean, good it's, a, it's tough to pull five. I'm surprised you've gotten four yeah, so quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Color purple. Okay. Color purple so is very good. Very, very good. It's a respectable list. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I like the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and getting to know the real dream. Mm. Right? We're wanting to get close here. Okay. Tell us what you're passionate about outside of acting. Um, I just launched an app maybe six, seven months ago mm -hmm. called Face Pop. Face Pop. Um, two of my other partners. And what Face Pop is, it allows you to create self-made emojis featuring your face. Oh, wow. So it's not an avatar, it's not a cartoon, it's actually your face. So okay. it looks like a floating head in a text. That's dope. So uh, very passionate about that. Also, too, uh, I feed the homeless every Wednesday in LA. I'm part of a foundation called My Friend's House LA. And uh, I've been doing it for about eight years now. We are literally right downtown in the heart of Skid Row. We set up and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's grown. We also have a, a building now to where, you know, we do makeovers, we have clothes, we have classes, thing, and things of that nature. So definitely giving back to those less fortunate yeah. is definitely one of my passions. Um, because it's just, you know, I was just raised to always give back. Yeah, you know, we're, you're blessed with so much that you have to be able to give back, yeah. period. Like, it's, it's, it's your duty. It's your duty. So those are like, those are like my passion. And I love working out. Love working out. Okay. Those yeah. are great answers. Yeah. Um, what about what's coming next? What's next on the horizon for you? Um, well, second season of all Americans. We'll be watching. Yeah, so we just uh, we just got renewed. So I think we'll start probably in the summer. Okay. Um, and then I have another movie coming out, hopefully in the summer, called Shepherd. Shepherd. And uh, hopefully it'll be out in the summer. It's a thriller. Oh, um, I like thrillers. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And uh, what else do we have? Oh, I have uh, Little Nas X and uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, wow. Old Town Road. We shot the video a couple of weeks ago. That sounds like fun. Yeah, so it's uh, myself, Chris Rock, Ha Ha Davis, oh. um, Billy Ray Cyrus, what? and Little Nas X. What? Yeah. what were you doing in the video? I play a, uh, it's Chris Rock is the deputy on the sheriff. Okay. Me and Ha Ha are sheriffs. Or cowboy yeah. hat so we literally kind. have a yeah. badge, cowboy hat, yes. and we're on horses. Were there chaps? Yeah, no chaps. <laughs> okay. And we're on horses, and we're literally chasing after a uh, little Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus oh, no way. on horses while they're in the land. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, I've yeah, got to see that. Yeah, directed okay. uh, directed by Cal Maddox, a good friend of mine. So, uh, yeah, that'll hopefully be out in a couple of days. Got to see it. And yeah. it's one of the catchiest, like, hottest songs yeah, right now. Yeah, it's the number so one it's song. It's the crazy. number one song on Billboard crazy. and in the country. Yeah. So, I was just blessed to have the opportunity to be in this video. So, okay. yeah. Um, tell us about the app that you're working on. Yes, so Facepop Face is um, excited. Facepop allows you, like I said, to create your own self-made emojis okay. featuring your face. Is it, can I just look in the app store? Is it yeah, free? Yeah, it's free. Or, okay. It's free, so. How customized? Like, like, can I get like my own like freckles and all? How many that's details? Coming. That's okay, coming. Okay, all right. That's Gotta coming. support the freckle community. But as of right now, <laughs> this is what it kind of looks like. Okay. So, um, oh, it that's, allows you to be able to create that's your, your face. So, that's there, it, there yeah. It is. There it is. You can be able to tap it. Yeah. And then, like, it was my friend's birthday, so I, I said, see. Happy birthday. Man, I'm just oh, trying to cool. stay stuck or free in the land of lollipops. I love Here that. You go. Customizable. And get to see your own face yeah. instead of some. Emoji that's not accurate or, yeah, or, like, or an avatar that doesn't really look yes, like Yes, that's so, it. Yeah. yeah, so we're excited about that. Uh, we launched, uh, we've been in the market about six, seven months. Yeah. And right now we're in the process of uh, raising more funds for our second round. Okay. So we can get it in the hand. Okay. So that's that's uh, that's our next. So we can search for it in, in yeah. the Apple uh, Apple Store. And it's F A C E P O P, all one word, and uh, you'll see it It'll pop up. Yeah. Great. Yes, indeed. So okay. I'm excited about that. Well, Kareem, we appreciate you sitting us down and talking with us today. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure the fans appreciate it. So can you let them know where they can find you? Yeah, um, Kareem Grimes, all platforms, K-A-R-E-E-M-G-R-I-M-E-S -E -E on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Snapchat. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, you can go to Facepop, that's uh, F-A-C-E-P-O-P -P, in the Apple Store, or you can go to www.facepopapp.com.
Great. Yep. And we'd like to thank Marquee Lounge Absolutely. as well. It's a big great. shout out to We Just Living. We in the <laughs> loo right now. Big shout out to my cousin Zip, aka Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. And uh, yeah, if you guys are ever in the St. Louis area, definitely check out Marquis Catfish Nuggets. Amazing. Amazing. Got to got to do the sliders though. So that's my sliders. personal okay. favorite. Okay, next time um, I'll give yeah. you sliders. Yeah, yeah. Catfish Nuggets <laughs> is on point. And uh, yeah, just so much love out here, man. I appreciate it. Thank Until you so next much. time. Indeed. Thanks Indeed. for tuning in. <laughs>